This is Mike Mozart of Jeepers Media on YouTube back again with my fourth Viacom video. I'm going to be doing lots more failed toy reviews, but this is a very important video because Viacom stole from a you. That's right, Viacom stole from the YouTube community. Please be patient with these Viacom fails videos because if you are, the next fail toy is the worst fail of all time. It's the famous Kaba Kick Russian Roulette toy for children from Japan. I have one of the only samples in the world and I'm going to be making the best video ever of it. And I really appreciate all of the Viacom information people have been sending to my YouTube Jeepers Media messages. Keep it coming. I'm getting thousands a day of some of the most interesting um, things about Viacom. I really appreciate those and they're, they're going to be the source of a lot of great videos. Years ago, when YouTube was just starting out, Viacom bought a site called iFilm, which is basically like YouTube. It was a video sharing site. Viacom's iFilm has recently been renamed Spike. And check this out. This is a screen cap from iFilm a few years ago, encouraging copyright infringement by iFilm users. Listen to this viral video. Yeah, you know, those email attachments that get forwarded and forwarded until you've received them from everyone, from your best friend to get out of debt at AOL.com. We've scoured the web and all of our inboxes to bring you the funniest and most outrageous of them all. So shut your door, make sure no one else is around, and dig in. And when you're through, do what any good netizen would do. Forward it on. Got a viral video clip? Send it to us at viralvideo at ifilm.com. Wow, Viacom. iFilm encouraged their users to share video clips, copyrighted clips like any good netizen would do? You ask people to send them to you to post on your own site? Notice they didn't ask, oh, give us copyright clearance or let us know who the copyright holder is. Hell no. So how long was that on your site, iFilm? Quite a while, huh? However, when Viacom sued YouTube over those copyrighted clips YouTubers uploaded, a reporter asked Viacom, No, you've got iFilm. Didn't you ever upload any copyrighted clips to that? Couldn't you get in trouble too? Listen to the response the reporter got. Contributions to iFilm are all screened by iFilm employees prior to posting to ensure that copyrighted, pornographic, or other restricted content is not posted to the site. This was March 19th, 2007. Users could upload videos to iFilmSpike.com also, and they were marked like this, user video. iFilm actually admitted that the videos that were in the viral category were ones they chose and uploaded themselves. Like this viral video, fat guy goes ape shit and webcam rant. Wait a second, I remember that video from YouTube not too long ago. Posted on Spike.com August 20th, 2009. So, what do you think this guy has? A weight problem or what? Tags, fat, freak out, guy, rant, stupid, webcam, and YouTube. They actually put in the tags YouTube. They pre-screen these and then one of the tags is YouTube, yet they chose to publish it anyway? They did it themselves? So how about it, Norm's Barstool? They called you fat and stupid. That was the reason you were ranting to begin with. And what did they do? They insulted you by saying you were fat and stupid in the description and the title. I think you need to make a video about Viacom and tell them what you think of them now. But Norm's Barstool, they were very happy to put a pre-roll ad that was 30 seconds long in front of your video so they can make some ka-ching off of you. I hope they're sharing all that money with you. Oh, Viacom, I'm sure you have documentation proving you have the rights to upload all these videos. Um, there's lots more. What's this? Look who's featured on Spike.com. It's the famous YouTuber Copper Cab. Angry Ginger Kid, still kind of angry. The featured viral video of the day. Copper Cab is the user on YouTube that South Park has been making fun of in their own episodes. And he put up videos complaining about it. Yet, they thought it was a great idea to steal his videos. I already contacted Copper Cab. He said you didn't have permission. But man, you love running your advertising as pre-rolls on his content. Viacom is against all YouTubers right now. We have to support YouTube right now. It's not about if you love Copper Cab or you hate Copper Cab. It's about protecting our YouTube. Oh, and check out the tags for this video. The tags, angry, Copper Cab, funny, gingers, rent, South Park, and stupid. Copper Cab, they called you stupid. Adults with a team of lawyers decided to call you stupid on their website. Are you stupid, Copper Cab? Are you going to put up with this? YouTubers, there are two YouTubers already who have been called stupid by Viacom. They called you stupid.
You're not going to put up with that crap, are you? By the way, he was a kid too. I believe he's under 18. Um, are you stealing from children? You might have seen this new iPad video with the cat in it. Iggy investigates an iPad. The kitty cat playing with the iPad. Four and a half million views. Wow, that video was uploaded April 13th, 2010. Oh! What's this? Check this out. April 14th, the very next day, Spike TV decided, hey, let's upload that. Let's change the name and not give credit to the people that uploaded it on YouTube. They give no credit to the original poster on YouTube. This video on YouTube, Corgi and Rabbit, an adorable video uploaded by Super Corgi, March 16, 2006, with 154,000 views. Here it is on Spike.com. Check out all the advertising. I swear to God, Spike.com carpet bombs you with flash video advertising. It makes everything load so slow, that site sucks for browsing. But check that out, Corgi, Puppy, and Dwarf bunny. So now it isn't a rabbit anymore, it's a bunny. Spike.com is loaded with YouTubers videos, your videos, and they made them hard to find. Do you notice they changed the titles and they often don't give any credit to the people that originally uploaded them on YouTube? And one of the most brilliant talents on YouTube, Mark Koval, uploaded a video called YouTube in 1985. It's a great video. It's one of my favorites. If you haven't seen it, you got to check it out. But check this out, Spike TV liked it too and uploaded it without Mark Koval's permission. I already spoke to him. They like Mark Koval's video enough to put a 30 second pre-roll ad and reap the benefits of all the advertising revenue from around it. Viacom, I have screen caps of literally thousands of clips, thousands of clips from iFilm and Spike.com, which infringe copyrights, a lot of them of YouTube people. I'm gonna start a blog and start posting all of these clips so everyone can see just how much copyright infringement you've been engaged in. You complained about YouTubers uploading clips, mostly 14, 15 year old kids. You got a whole freaking team of lawyers. You must be held to a higher standard. You knew better. Those kids didn't know any better. And you expect us to watch your programming? You expect us to patronize your advertisers? Hell no. Check this out, Charlie the Unicorn on YouTube, 47 million views. But check out this video, Candy Mountain, uploaded February 8th, 2007, on the dawn of the giant takedown notices against YouTube. I wonder if they had permission to upload that. I'm certain if they had permission, they would have given it the proper title. But Viacom re-uploaded it anyway as Charlie the Unicorn, July 30th, 2007. I have samples of thousands of such videos that they uploaded onto Spike.com. Oh, check out this one. Hungry Bengal Kitten, Impatient Kitty on YouTube, 800,000 views. Check this out, uploaded to Spike, which is Viacom, a short time later, and they called it Very Hungry Kitten, and the tags don't say anything about YouTube or pointing back to YouTube. Did you do that deliberately to make it hard for YouTubers to determine the copyright infringing videos? YouTube, you need discovery on all their documentation of why they uploaded so many YouTubers videos, yet did not give any credit or point back to them and why they changed the titles. Oh, and this brand new video by Freddy25, the TV theme medley, March 16, 2010, a million and a half views. Posted on Spike.com, the ultimate TV theme medley. They changed the name and uploaded it three days later, like they didn't know it came from YouTube. So Spike.com, those kids licensed you that video, right? And you have the documentation where they actually gave you a license to run that, right? And is nothing sacred? Here's Smosh on their site. Mortal Kombat theme, November 19th, 2005, 16 million views. But check this out. A few months later, it's on Spike.com. I hope you Smosh guys are getting ad revenue from that because they run pre-roll advertising before it. They have flash video ads all the way around it. They're making some money on us YouTubers. And one of my very favorite videos on YouTube of all time is the circle circle dot dot video with the Legos that was done by Blunty3000. It was uploaded January 17th, 2007, right about the time those takedown notices went out from Viacom. Just six days later, uploaded to Spike.com. I wonder if he got any ad revenue from this. I wonder if he gave them permission. And would you believe that almost all of the Will It Blend videos are there? I called Blendtec. I spoke to the people at Blendtec. They had no idea their videos were there. They were very surprised that their newest iPad video that they put up just a few days ago was already uploaded to Spike.com with condom advertising running around it. They uploaded it the same freaking day. And a pre-roll ad for things such as Splinter Cell. The Will It Blend people were not happy with iFilm, Spike.com, Viacom. Oh, and YouTube Google, 
the Willet Blend people are getting back to you with all this documentation. And don't forget those iFilmSpike.com people sent out a public statement to the press saying they personally previewed every video for copyright infringements. That's why videos like this are uploaded. Naruto Soil Halo. Now it's in the viral video category, which they claim they upload themselves. And check out this description. Found this on LimeWire? That's where all legitimate corporations get their videos to upload. LimeWire. Good one, Viacom. And that's not the only one. And look at this video on the channel, One Man Show. What song is this? Over three and a half million views. And here it is on Spike.com retitled, Weird Backwards Singing. With 3,600 views, upload it just a few days later. By the way, notice that this is an embedded YouTube player where you could take the HTML code and you can make those videos like appear in a little box on your website or forum. Check out these YouTube terms of service involving that little player. If you use the YouTube embeddable player on your website, you must include a prominent link back to the YouTube website on the pages containing the embeddable player and you may not modify, build upon, or block any portion of the embeddable player in any way. But Viacom did that exact thing. You're also not allowed to put those embeddable players on a website for the sole purpose of getting advertising revenue. Everybody knows this video, leave Britney alone. It's Chris Crocker, uploaded September 10th, 2007. But check this out on Spike.com, leave Britney alone. It was uploaded September 13th, just three days later, in an embeddable player. And the YouTube terms of service say you can't put that embeddable player where the main purpose is to get revenue from the advertising around it, but they did. Check out this household hacker video, how to charge an iPod using electrolytes and an onion. Here is the same video embedded in a player on Spike.com, how to charge an iPod with an onion. The title is different. It was uploaded November 16th, 2007. Check this out. One of household hackers videos on Spike.com how to charge an iPod with an onion. There's the date that it's uploaded. This is a YouTube viewer that's embedded. If you double click on the video, it does not take you to YouTube. It just restarts the video. If you refresh this video, at the very beginning of this is a link for Household Hacker that will take you, that will take you to his newest videos. Watch. There's a great big annotation link. You click it, and it does nothing. They've disabled that. They've disabled going to YouTube and disabled the links. This is one of my videos embedded on imboard.com. You see how the YouTube player looks. I'll start the video. If I click this video as it's playing, it brings me back to YouTube. Right to the original playing page of that video. I am bored. Here's my Batman video. See the annotation here? Click here to see my top 20 funny videos. I click that, embedded it, and I am bored, and I go right back to YouTube. Right to that playlist. That has been disabled on all the videos on Spike.com, which was iFilms. And they don't credit Household Hacker any place for that video. There's no link back from that video. But I noticed they use that embeddable player only for a very short period of time. And my message to YouTube, why don't you shut off access to all those videos to Spike.com? They don't need those videos there. They have so much stellar content that drags in the viewers. So how about that, YouTube community? Look what Viacom did to you. They stole from you. They blocked link backs. They got advertising revenue from your videos. They deliberately left your names and descriptions off of those videos. If they say, well, somebody sent us the clip and it was viral, that doesn't give them the right to upload it because they know the copyright belongs to somebody. And as a sneak preview of one of my upcoming Viacom videos, why don't we look back into the dark past of iFilm in my thousands of screen caps that go back to the first day it started from a source that I have that's going to, at the moment, remain um, anonymous. You've got to check out this article on the Adweek blog. Copyright takedowns in 2005 against iFilm by NBC. Triumph mocks Bon Jovi. Triumph the insult comic dog at the Star's home. Triumph at the Westminster Dog Show. Why are there so many Triumph the insult comic dog videos on here? Certainly you had all the rights to upload these. Check out this one Triumph insult dog video on iFilm. Triumph mocks Bon Jovi with 628,256 views. 
at least five months before YouTube even came into existence. And check out these NBC late night clips on iFilm, September 1st, 2004. Was all this material ordered removed? How many hundreds of millions of views were taken down? Those are some of iFilm's most viewed videos that weren't porn, but that's part of the next video too. Hey NBC, do you know if they went against YouTube, why don't you go after them for a billion dollars too? Oh, but there's lots more clips. My next video will expose just how much copyrighted material they had on their site. YouTube, Google, you've got to file discovery on all the takedown notices that they had, especially in 2005, particularly the ones involving NBC and Triumph the Insult Dog. Not only is Viacom uploading our videos to their Spike.com site, they're doing it almost right up to today. They're doing it as recently as the last few days. What do they do? They wait till videos go viral and they skim the cream off the top because they know that only 1% of the videos get 99% of the views? Is that your plan, Viacom? YouTube, why don't you get some discovery to see if they have any documentation to that? Look what they're doing to YouTube and they expect more from kids without a team of lawyers like they have? To all the YouTubers watching this right now, if somebody says one thing and does another, they're called a hypocrite. But in my book, I call them a scumbag. Put in the comments section what you would call Viacom, Spike.com, MTV, and all these other related companies under that Viacom umbrella. Make sure you upload this video onto your YouTube channel. You can mirror this all over YouTube if you wish. Upload this video all over the internet. I want the world to see what they've done. And this is only the first of three more videos just like it. And who knows, maybe one or two of these people actually did upload those or give them permission. The people I've spoken to are all confused saying, we didn't give them any permission, how did it get there? How about if I come? How did those get there? And why are there so many other thousands, thousands of uploaded videos on your site that obviously are copyright infringing videos? Why? Give us some answers. Why? And don't forget, you told good netizens to share videos. You instructed them to commit copyright infringement, to be good netizens right on your own iFilm site. And you're complaining about copyright infringements on YouTube when you are actually fostering an environment of copyright infringement. Any YouTuber that sees a Paramount Pictures movie or buys a DVD that says Paramount Pictures or MTV Films or Nickelodeon Films, if you buy a SpongeBob toy or a Dora toy, you should be ashamed of yourselves. For we have to show them that 150 million people can make a huge difference. Show them. And stop visiting all of Icom's websites like Webkins, Quizilla, Game Trailers, Atom Films. Don't go to those places anymore. And don't forget to Twitter this video and add hashmark Viacom fails to all your tweets. No one walks all over our community and gets away with it. Nobody. And don't forget that we are the you in YouTube. Our YouTube. Thanks again.